Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, color looks off. Well, you know what? I'm not adjusting it. I don't have time for it today. Good morning. It is Greek Tuesday. I had to pick a four-minute hymn for today, didn't I? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Good morning. Uh, the day of Saint Santos, Sa Santos Valentino, uh, Saint Valentine's Day. So I hope you got your loved one a little something uh, to commemorate um, the uh, brutal beating and death of uh, Valentine, martyr and uh, recognized martyr on on this day. Um, that's the, a lot of people will realize that. Oh, let's buy chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they beat him to death. So. Um, that's nice. That's nice. Let's let's just uh, before I get into things, let's just talk about it. Valentine martyr, a physician and priest living in Rome during the rule of Emperor Claudius. Valentine became one of the noted martyrs of the third century. The commemoration of his death, which occurred in AD two seventy. So the year 270 AD, just before the 300s, became part of the calendar of remembrance in the early uh, Church of the West. Uh, tradition suggests that on the day of his execution for his, for his Christian faith, Valentine left a note of encouragement for a child of his jailer written on an irregularly shaped piece of paper. Uh, this greeting became a pattern for millions of written expressions of love and caring that now are the highlight of Valentine's Day in many nations. So that irregularly shaped piece of paper, which we now call heart shaped. Uh, no, I can't. I can't do it. Is it I, no, never mind. Uh, is is the the basis for that? Um, and of course, it doesn't look anything like a heart, right? A heart looks more like a like a clenched fist, right? And the boom, boom, boom. So, but. Um, yeah, so buy your loved one chocolates and remember, I wonder, you know, um, back here, there is, uh, where is it in here? There's additional writings on these, on these, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to dig for it. There's additional writings on the commemoration days in the back, and I, but I haven't. I found them yesterday when I was looking for something else. I didn't even know they were there. And oh, hello! What's this? Um, there, all the all the ribbons that my that my treasury of daily prayer has to keep track of which psalm and and which day and which order of service and what season of the church we're in and et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't have one for the uh, to mark the martyr days. So I, I don't know. Good morning. Glad you're here with me. Good morning, Mushtak, and good evening as well. Uh, there's Bonnie right there at the top. Uh, Valentine's Day 34. Well, now I know what the temperature is. I hadn't even looked. Jerry, good morning. 41. All right. Uh, and you're sunny still. See, we lost our sun yesterday, and it never really came back. I spent all day underneath Bonnie's car, so I wouldn't know. But And I want to tell you, I want to tell you that I still, I still don't like Fords. <laughs> Everything in that car is put together in a way that you can either see the part that you want to work on or you can put your hand on the part, but you cannot put your hand on it and see it and nothing fits. Basically should have been drop engine, change alternator. Um, and I don't even want to discuss changing the serpentine belt. That was two hours to get the alternator out. Another two and a half hours to change the serpentine belt, and another two hours to get the alternator back in. <sighs> I like my dodges. I can work on dodges. Jill and John, good morning. Kathy, good morning. Ann and Deb, good morning to you guys. Happy Valentine's to you as well. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Glenn, good morning. There's Connie and Robin. Good morning. Rain's to come later. Yeah, I've been hearing that. I don't know that rain is a good thing on top of all the ice that we've still got. The driveway out here at the church is like a skating rink. I'm surprised I haven't seen hockey players show up. Verna, good morning to you. I'm going to do a refresh here and just see who else is here with us. If anything changed while I was yakadacking. Uh, oh, yeah, there's Cindy. Good morning, Cindy, and happy Valentine's to you as well. All right, let's, uh, and good morning to everyone who's 
tuning in but not saying anything. And uh, to those who watch later here on Facebook or over on YouTube uh, after 11 this morning, good morning to you. What should I say? Don't forget to like and share. I guess that's what I'm supposed to say, and then it, it grows. But uh, so, you know, like and share. All right. Uh, let's get down to the to the basics here. It is uh, the morning. So we are in Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. I have my treasury of daily prayer right here. Uh, as we begin this morning on the correct page there, Pastor, not on the other page. Different ribbon. Um, all right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our psalm today, Psalm 119. Verses 153 to 160. Maybe someday I'll just come on here and we'll read Psalm 119 from beginning to end, and that'll be the whole thing. Oh, it's not meant to be read that way. Psalm 119, 153 to 160. Look on my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your just decrees. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. I look at the faithless with disgust, because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your just and righteous decrees endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's just move right along into our reading today. Our reading from Job, continuing here with Job, um, his, his uh, plea before God. Um, remember yesterday, basically, he said, I'm not worthy to, to plead. No man is worthy to plead before God. But if I could, if, if the fear of him was not upon me, I would stand and speak. Uh, that was chapter 9. Now we're in chapter 10, verses 1 to 22. And he continues to plead. So Job chapter 10, starting at verse 1. I loathe my life. I will give free utterance to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, do not condemn me. Let me know why you contend against me. Does it seem good to you to oppress, to despise the work of your hands and favor the designs of the wicked? Have you eyes of flesh? Do you see as man sees? Are your days as the days of man? Are your years as man's years that you may that you seek out my iniquity and search for my sin. Although you know that I am not guilty, and there is none to deliver out of your hand. Your hands fashioned and made me, and now you have destroyed me altogether. Remember that you have made me like clay, and will you return me to the dust? Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? You clothed me with skin and flesh, and knit me together with bones and sinews. You have granted me life and steadfast love, and your care has preserved my spirit. Yet these things you hid in your heart. I know that this was your purpose. If I sin, you watch me, and do not acquit me of my iniquity. If I am guilty, woe to me. If I am in the right, I cannot lift up my head. For I am filled with disgrace and look on my affliction. And were my head lifted up, you would hunt me like a lion, and again work wonders against me. You renew your witness against me and increase your vexation toward me. 
you bring fresh troops against me. Why did you bring me out of the womb? Would that you had died, would that I had died before any eye had seen me, and were as though I had not been carried from womb to grave. Are not my days few? Then cease and leave me alone, that I may find a little cheer before I go, and I shall not return to the land of darkness and deep shadow, the land of gloom like thick darkness, like deep shadow without any order, where light is as thick darkness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would say that Job's a little vexed. That's what I would say. Um, he clearly understands that everything is in God's hands. Um, the good and the wicked. He knows that there is really nothing that he can do about it. He is powerless before God, as we all are. <clears throat> he, you know, yesterday he said, you know, if I didn't have the fear of God, I would, I would speak. And so he says, he says here now, I will give free utterance to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, do not condemn me. Let me know why you contend against me. He's having a conversation with God. So he doesn't deny God. He clearly admits the existence of our Lord. It's not that he's a denier of God. It's that he wants to know why God is allowing suffering to come upon him. Does it seem good to you to oppress and to despise the work of your hands? For that's what we are. We are all the work of his hands. He allows men and women to participate in the creative process, but in the end, that which comes from its mother is a creation of God. It doesn't take two to make a baby. It takes three, good and wicked alike. Have you flesh of eyes? Do you see as a man sees? Are your days as a days of a man? Are your years as a man's years? Which they are not. God exists outside of time and space. And yet, because he eventually comes at the proper time in flesh, he knows what a day is and what a year is and how it feels when time passes. Although you know that I am not guilty, Job says, there is none to deliver out of your hand. And yet that's what he sends Christ for. That's exactly what he sends Jesus for, is to deliver the work of his hands from his wrath. Your hands fashioned me and made me. See, there you go. And there is none to deliver me out of your hand. Your hands, oh, your hands fashioned and made me, and now you've destroyed me altogether. And this is, this is interesting. I heard Bonnie giggle when I read this with kind of an ew. But remember that you have made me like clay. Will you return me to dust? Well, yeah, yeah, to dust shall you return. That was, that was the uh, pronouncement of the curse after man fell into sin, right? You'll, you will eat by the sweat of your brow. The, the land will not produce for you the way that it has in the past. It will fight you with weeds and thorns, and you will die, and to the dust you shall return. And I, I, this is what, what, I, what I like about this, what I see, what I appreciate about this is if you think of things made of clay, they're hard, they're firm, they're solid. Um, they can be fired. In fact, China, people think of China being very delicate, but it's one of the strongest materials made out of clay. Um, you know, a, a, a China plate, if you drop it, is far less likely to break than just simply a fired plate uh, or a... a, a, a um, uh, the word went out of my head, but the things you make, terracotta, terracotta pots, they shatter the minute you touch them. In fact, I've had them break when I looked at them the wrong way. Um, so the second part, he, after he says, you make me like clay and, and uh, you return me to the dust, do you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? And that's more like we are, right? We're soft, fleshly beings. We're like mushy, like cheese. Um 
and a little bit stinky too, like cheese. Clothed me with skin and flesh, knit me together with bones and sinews, granted me life and steadfast love, and your care has preserved my spirit. Uh, he recognizes that God's God is the sustaining being, the sustaining force in his life, um, and yet he knows that's the purpose of God, but if I sin, you watch me, and if I am in the right, I cannot lift up my head. Even though he knows he's right, he can't stand up and look at God and say, I'm, what are you doing? You don't condemn me. I'm right. I'm sinless. Because if I am, you will attack me for that. For in truth, because in my in sin did my mother conceive me, I am filled with disgrace and look only upon my affliction, my suffering. If my head were lifted up, you'd hunt me like a lion and work wonders against me. You tear down the bold and raise up the humble. You renew your witness against me and increase your vexation toward me. You bring fresh troops against me. And the minute I think I, I'm, I'm at peace, you send more against me. Why did you even bring me from the womb? This passage began with, I loathe my life. Loathe my life. And now he says, why did you bring me out from the womb? Would that I had died before any eye had seen me. And were as though I had not even been from the womb to the grave. There are days. I think every, everybody has them. Job is focused on his suffering. The book is not about suffering. The book is about faithfulness. But if he's going to lament and he's going to complain to God, he's going to tell him about his suffering. And that's what we do. And there is no way that Job really means that he wishes, other than in the moment, in the time, that he had never been born. Like a, like a, a petulant teenager in his early teen years having a fight with his parents saying, would that I had never been born. I wish you had never given birth to me. Our days are few enough as it is. When they cease, when they cease, well, Job is seeing that when his days end, he shall not return, going to the land of darkness and deep shadow, the land of gloom and thick darkness, the grave. And that's the fear of the Lord speaking. For in our sin, we are condemned to our eternal death and despair. And what are we to do about that? Well, there's nothing we can do. Like Job says, if we lift up our head, he'll hunt us like a lion. But Christ can. God in flesh can do something about that and has. When Christ came to give his life upon the cross, his blood shed covers the sins of all, from Adam to the last person who will be born, including Job. And we know that Job has been a faithful man and continues to be a faithful man, and his sins will be covered by Christ's blood, and he will not go to the place of darkness and deep shadow. By faith in God, by trust in God, by the fear of God, he too will be joined with us in the resurrection and the promise of everlasting life. Those outside of Christ, outside of God, those who do not fear God, those who do not trust in God, those who do not have Christ as their Savior, the darkness is what they get. Their sins cannot be forgiven. It's not because God wouldn't forgive them. It's because they refuse to allow him to forgive them. But we who give ourselves over to the grace of Christ and the, great, the mercy of God in Christ Jesus, his grace, have the promise of eternal life with him, going not to a place of darkness, regardless of the suffering we have in this life, 
We live 80 or 85 years by reason of strength, maybe longer, maybe less. But by faith in Christ, we go to a place where Christ is the light and the life, where there is no night. We live there with, eternally with him and his kingdom. We fear the Lord as Job fears the Lord, but we also know that he has given us life and steadfast love, and he preserves us. So we know it because Christ. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you kindled the flame of your love in the heart of your holy martyr, Valentine. Grant to us, your humble servants, a like faith in the power of love, that we who rejoice in Christ's triumph may embody his love in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and... Uh, From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Something like that. Uh, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sometimes I'm doing and thinking and saying and things get bumped. We pray as our Lord taught us, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our prayer for ourselves and others on this Tuesday morning. Lord, gracious and merciful, by your Holy Spirit you have implanted in my heart, an undying hope that promises rest after the struggles of this present life and an everlasting peace in the glories of your eternity. Look with favor upon me and mercifully help me through the difficult times of my life. Be with me as I face the hardships and irritations of today, the temptations of Satan, and the sins and doubts of my own heart. Graciously take me by the hand and lead me hour after hour into the sunshine of your grace. Direct my footsteps to render service to you and to all people. Keep all harm and danger of both body and soul out of my day. Let me live contentious, continuously in your presence. I pray for all those who are weary and burdened, for all who are discouraged, for all who mourn and weep, and for all who are lonely and distressed. Especially this day, we pray for Pat and Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, and for those families who are in the areas of the chemical fires uh, out, out west where the trains have collided, and for all those who call upon your most holy name. Draw closer to them and to me with your ever-renewing strength and preserve us all in this saving faith to the end of of days. Through Jesus Christ, my precious Savior and friend. Amen. Wait, it's not out west. It's um, it's Ohio. Yeah, it's uh, uh, the city is Palestine, Ohio, is where there's train fires going on right now with um, well, toxic chemicals. Fish are dying in the waters. And that's an important thing to me. All right. Uh, continuing. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from every sin and evil, 
that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, it is a blessing that I have the talent to do it. The problem is my body is getting too old to do it, Jerry. That's the, I hurt from head to toe. By the way, if you know of an auto mechanic who has a full beard and he keeps it clean when you see him, not in the shop, but otherwise, that's impressive. I got to tell you, this thing was a snarled, dirty mess after I was done. Hey, God's peace be with you. I got to get going to Greek. We will see you back here tomorrow morning for our daily devotion. God's peace.